Okay, fantastic guys. We are set up and ready inside Unity. We've got our AR camera, which we're going to use as a background image. It's now time to look at how we get our GPS functionality working using C Sharp, Unity, and whatever device you guys have selected. So I'll just drop myself into the corner once more. There we go. And here we are. This is where I left you off last time. Now, what I forgot to do, unfortunately, is tell you to actually save your file. So let's save this, but I'm not going to save it as the sample scene. I'm going to go inside the scenes folder and I'm going to call this main. There we go. Now, once you've created the scene, it should appear inside here. There we go, main. I can now delete the sample scene as we don't need it. And then the final thing would be to go to file and build settings and then sample scene isn't there so I can click it and delete and I want to add the open scene which is the main scene okay there's no real difference between the main scene and this scene it's just simply for my own purposes that I've renamed uh, the scenes for later on so that I know exactly what I'm talking about each time so let's get rid okay the first thing that we're going to do then I want you to go to the assets and I want you to create a new folder so right click and create a folder. There we go. And using a capital S, I'm going to write the word scripts as this is where we're going to store our GPS script and whatever else we end up building as we go along. And then the first thing that I want to do is create a file, a C sharp file. There we go. And I'm just going to name it as GPS. Okay, so that has created our base foundation GPS script which we can see over on the side here and if I double click it will open up mono develop of um, Visual Studio if that's what you guys have installed which is actually what I've got installed okay here we are so we are now in Visual Studio I'll just bring this down a little bit just to get it in the frame nicely for you guys there we go okay so this is our base Unity uh, GPS script. As you know, you've probably created a hundred or so yourselves. Now, the whole concept of this is basically to initialize the location services on the mobile device. Now, the reason why I wanted to put this course together initially is because this has changed slightly and now doesn't work correctly on iPhone unless you use the documentation the updated documentation sorry from unity's website now it used to be in the past that you could create a uh, start a coroutine in start we don't need the update for now so i'll just delete you so we would start a coroutine in the start method and then that would trigger off a loop which would first check if location service had been allowed by the user and then if they had, then it would access the GPS information and load that in. Now, let me show you what's kind of changed. If I just quickly switch back to the, uh, the browser for a second, what I'm going to do is type in Unity GPS. And this will bring up the Google results for what I've just looked for. Now, the, these are kind of some of the videos that we're talking about that are now a little bit out of date and it doesn't work properly on the iPhone. Uh, it still works occasionally on Android, though. So um, there we go. Now, what I want you to do is click on location services. And here is the updated documentation, which gives you all the information on how to activate the GPS system inside a mobile device. Now, what I want to draw your attention to is I just want you to grab where it says I enumerator and copy all the way down to here. Now, let's copy this and drop it into our GPS file. And then what I'm going to do is explain exactly what it is that we're doing. So let's just overwrite this start function by pasting in the GPS script. Now bear in mind, if you look here, our this class is called Test Location Services, and that's the reason that I didn't overwrite the GPS class name. Now, instead of having the normal void start function, what is now required specifically for the iOS side to function correctly is that the start needs to actually be an I enumerator for a coroutine. 
Then as it jumps in, what it will do is check the input permissions and check the specific location permissions and see if they are enabled by the user. Now, if they're not enabled by the user, then it will break out of this loop and jump back down to the bottom and continuously go through. Now, if they are enabled by the user, which is basically when you open the app, allow this app to use your location, and you press the button, then it will continue in the script and it will enable using Unity's input uh, library it will start the location service. This will then connect to the chip and the GPS technology on the device and ping up to the satellite and within about five or 10 seconds, return a value. Now it does differ the time based on things like if you're indoors or outdoors, if you're in an area of good coverage, for example. So to compensate for this, we then move into a wire loop. And it will go around, if I just click the wire loop, all the way down to here. And it will check the status and see if it's still initializing or if it has actually found your target location. So it waits for a second and then loops back again. So there's a maximum wait time of 20 seconds, which you can alter if you want to. So we initially set the maximum wait time as an integer, a number. Uh, 20 and it jumps in and it says okay is is the location service status initialized if it isn't it waits for a second and removes one from this 20 now if it gets down to zero or less than one then that means that the service didn't start the device was unable to locate the uh, position of the user and it will print timed out which is great in the debug but not very good um, for the actual user. So we will be changing some code slightly to give us a little bit of feedback. Now it also gives us a status if it's failed and it will say that it's unable to determine the device location. However, in most cases, if you're not in an area of bad coverage and you are outdoors rather than indoors or not surrounded by thick walls, for example, um, then it should go through and actually print out the location of the device itself. Now what it does is from the location it will get the last data which is overwritten every time the GPS updates and it will overwrite two variables which are latitude and longitude. And then right down at the bottom to save on battery it will stop the location services. So in this particular case the script is used to first find where the user is and then stop the GPS service from running. Now I don't actually want it to do that, so I'm going to comment this out and save the file. That means that this script will continuously run and update, which does kill the battery slightly, but not that much. Now the second thing, slight tweak that I'm going to make, is inside here, the input location start, we can add to overriding parameters. Now the first one, is a number that we want for the desired accuracy in meters. Now it doesn't really work on less than five, but let's say I want mine to be uh, an accurate within 10 meters of where I'm stood. I can simply place a 10 there, or you can put a five in if you want to be like, uber accurate. Now the second parameter is the one that di dictates the battery life, the performance and things like that and it's the update method. So you guys have to decide how often you want this, this loop to run around and update the location. So I want this to update every time I move 10 meters outside. Now, the accuracy kind of works in conjunction with this between five and 500. Now, if you're using an app that simply wants to dictate how far location A is to location B within 500 meters, then that would be classed as a low accuracy application. So for example, if you wanted to know the difference from uh, London to New York, 500 meters from the center of each city doesn't really matter too much. However, if you wanted to find out the distance from a local shop um, to where I currently am stood in the street, then I would want this to be a lot more accurate. So maybe five or even 10 meters. Now you can play around with this number later on as we 
actually build this to the device and see what you think is suitable for you guys. Okay, so I want you to save the file for now. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how we're going to use this and actually pass the information through to some additional variables on a different script and display the GPS location on the screen in front of us as we're walking around. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video.